Hello! My name is Ferenc Bányai, and in this video I will show you how you can connect your Excel document to an Oracle database and pull data directly to your spreadsheet using Visual Basic for Applications. I think it doesn't surprise anybody that even Fortune 500 companies use Excel in order to create reports needed for their daily operation. I create Excel reports every day. When there are recurring reports that you have to create regularly, it may be a great help if you can automate them as much as possible. Here is one way to do that. In order to create your first Visual Basic application, you have to enable the Developer tab in your Excel. You can do that in the File menu, Options, and Customize ribbon. Here, tick in the Developer tab, and that was it. There you have your Developer tab on your ribbon. Now, click on Visual Basic, and you can start developing your first application. I'm going to create a subroutine to connect to Oracle. You can start your subroutine by typing the word sub and the name you choose for your subroutine. For example, connect to Oracle. As you can see, Excel automatically puts the closing tag there for you. Now we are going to introduce a few variables for our code. We'll need three of them. One for the connection, one for the record set, and one for the retrieve data. Let's do it. Sorry. Okay. Dim. Dim is a short for the word dimension and it allows you to declare variable names and their type. And AutoDB that you can see here is Microsoft Technology. It is a short for ActiveX Data Objects and it provides a layer between programming languages like the one that we are using here and databases. Well, let it be enough that we need this to connect to our Oracle database. And although this program is very short at the moment, we can immediately test it. We just need to step through it with F8, or if you go into the debug menu, there you can see step into F8. Oh, and immediately we get an error, user defined type not defined. See it for the AdobeDB connection. Why? Because it is not added to the references. Okay, stop debugging and go to Tools, References. And let's find the uh, ActiveX data objects. We have to scroll a little bit down, and there it was. Okay. Here you can see that uh, I'm using a quite old uh, Windows XP, and it only has a 2.8 library. Most probably in the environment that you are using, uh, you will see. Adobe, Ad, sorry, AdoDB 6.1, please use that, but for our demonstration purposes, the 2.8 will work as well. And now, if I start again by stepping into and pressing F8, it goes through the program without giving error, but seemingly nothing happened. But no error, that is good for us. Now, that we defined our variables, we need to initialize them like this. AdoDB appears here because we just added uh, this library to the references, so from now on we can use it. Okay, and let's do some cleanup uh, in the end. Okay, test it, run, and we did not get any error message. It means that our code is working now. Now we will open the connection that uh, we defined uh, here with CN. 
here Axel helps you what you need to enter uh, here between the brackets. But to save some time, I'm just copy pasting here the solution. Here you can see that uh, I uh, give the user ID as a HR. Password for HR is Oracle Test. Data source, here you put uh, the name of your Oracle database. For mine, that is uh, called OSCorp. And uh, finally, you put uh, the data provider that is, in our case, always Ora OLEDB.Oracle. By the way, you can uh, see here that I indeed have an HR uh, user within my database that has the password Oracle Test. OK. Now we can test our connection. For that, I need to do some preparation in my SQL window. Here you can see that there is only one connection uh, working system. And now, if I'm stepping through my application, here I see HR connected from Excel. So it is working. And if I move it on, test it again, I can see that the HR now is gone. Test it again. HR here. Moving on. HR is gone. So it is working. We're ready to pull some data in. And here is how to do that. If you would like to read a little bit more of these uh, various cursor types that uh, you can use, you can Google for them, and you would find a page like this, where you can uh, see the various uh, options that are available, and how do they work. As you can see, I used Open Forward Only, which is the default uh, cursor type. Let's move on. And here will come my SQL query. And to speed things a little bit up, I have already created uh, the SQL query. I'm selecting uh, employee ID first name concatenated, concatenated with last name from employees table, where employee ID is less than 120. And this gives me back uh, 20 records. So this will be the query that I'm going to use. And now that we have data in our record set, let's move that data into some other variables. OK, that's all. If I run my code, no error, but no data here either. Where are the data? Where can we find them? OK, that's what we are expecting the data. Now I'm going to use debug F8. Oh, and I can see that the data appeared here. There it is. Here is the data. There is one thing that we need to do with this data. We have to flush it to this Excel sheet. And how we will do that? Simple.
And now if I run it, here I have the data, with a slight problem. I don't want to have it uh, like this, I have been expecting something like this. How can I do that? I go back uh, to my Excel sheet and here I say Actually you can see that this is the same transpose that I have used here while pasting special transpose. Ok, now let's see what happens if I run it. Ok, seems a little bit better. Let's clean it up uh, to see the result. Ok, but now we are expecting a different range that would be B20. Sorry. Here is the data. Mm. I think you would expect a bit more clever solution, so let's see what we can do here. Turn this thing into a table with a header. Get rid of the unneeded data. Insert the table here. Give it a name T employees. And going back to the code, instead of this line, I'm going to use this one. On the active sheet, I'm going to find the T employees object and I will insert exactly as much data into its uh, range, as much data is there in this MTX uh, data variable. If I run it now, seemingly nothing happens, but if I just delete this and run it again, there you go. Let's do it some more dynamically. 130, there you go working. Finally, let's see what happens if we load less data that is already in the table. Modify the condition in the query to 110. Execute the query and well, seemingly nothing happened, but actually the data was refreshed. Only it was refreshed with itself. Now, what can we do? You will see that the solution is uh, trivial and easy. We delete the data from the table and we do it before we do the data loading. Like this. Ok, let's test again. And you see that our code is working as expected. And that's the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new that you can use in your work. You can find the complete source code of this training on GitHub on this link. If you like this video, press a like on it, or if you have questions, ideas, or just want to remark something about it, you can write your comments to this video. And don't forget to subscribe, so you would be notified when I finish my next IT-related training video. Bye for now!